Hey, good morning, coffee heads. Welcome to another edition of Coffee with Tim. This morning, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about, so stick around and find out what that's all about. And I want to give a shout out to all the sidewalks in the world and a big shout out to my bro, Jimmy Law. So grab yourself something to drink, sit back, and enjoy this. Okay, my location this morning is I'm in the War Room at America's Keswick in Whiting, New Jersey. The War Room is on the beach, basically. There's a men's and women's shower bathroom behind me, and then the lifeguard room over to my left, and then this little prayer, it's called a prayer room. It's called the War Room, and this is where the sewers, we meet every morning, Monday through Thursday on our devotions, and we hang out here. And there's a cross behind me where you can nail something to it for prayers and uh, put it on the cross where Jesus was for you. That's my location. I wish you were here. Much more fun in the person. So outside the war room, they're having a bonfire and there might be some singing going on. So if you hear that and you see me join in, that's, that's what's going on. Uh, shout out to bro Jimmy La. I had one of the biggest uh, audiences and engagement level of any video I've ever done last week because of Jimmy's song. I think people were sticking around. I got some good feedback. I, I don't have my mailbag with me today, but a lot of good good feedback. Jimmy, your song is a big hit. And God bless you and God bless your album. And people are telling me they're singing the song. So I can't, I can't wait for you to have the, the link available for me so I can share with them how they can get it. Uh, it's just a great song. Thank you for sharing the, the video, and I uh, appreciate everybody sticking around to, to see the song. Thank you, bro. All right, I don't know what this thing was called. Um, I just want to shout out to my sewers. Uh, we had two couples, Neil and Cindy Campbell, and Phil and Jeanette McMahon have come. Phil and Jeanette, it's their first sewer project, and uh, Neil and Cindy have been on the road for a while and done several projects. But the Lord's brought them into our life, and we are really enjoying the fellowship. Neil and Phil and I are painting one of the staff housing uh, for one of the main couples here, the staff. And so we're painting the, basically the entire interior of the house. Neil is much more proficient in painting, and so he is concentrating on doing the kitchen cabinet. We're going to repaint most of the kitchen cabinets. He's doing a quality job. Phil and I have been doing bathrooms and tearing wallpaper out of a uh, bedrooms and turn wallpaper out of a bathroom and just lots of uh, lots of painting in our old house so we're having a good time you wouldn't think that painting is is physically hard but it actually is I'm pretty tired and the girls my my gal Les is she's still working for the intake office learning how to replace the the main gal so she can have some vacation time and the, the girls have been working in housekeeping and I think they're going to get to do some flowers this coming week. And they seem to be hitting it off fine. We've had some great game nights. It's fun to see what people are really like. And it's just, it's been a fast. Two weeks already gone. And uh, we really come to, to enjoy and love these couples. Thanks, guys, for being with us. Okay, this morning, here's a, a shout out to all the sidewalks. Because basically, that's what's keeping me off the streets. All the sidewalks. <laughs> okay, we're going to try this again. I, I was just talking, I got so depressed. I got so depressed, I don't even want to finish the recording. I'm weary in my soul. I'm weary of the battle. I'm weary. I'm going to be uh, 43 years old this week. Uh, 43 years ago, when I was 21 years old, I believed and received I gave myself to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I went in there with not 100% faith. I put the weight that I could, and it was a good bit of weight. I had just this little fear that this was just a scam, that, that Frank was telling me something, and it would turn out to be a bait and switch, where all of a sudden the church, I had to give the church all my money. And I just had that fear of religion, as it were, a distrust of religion. And rightly so, there's a lot of religion, a lot of stuff done in the name of religion that's ungodly. 
But that's how I started. I believe that Jesus Christ, for the first time in my life, he had uh, actually been dying on the cross in my place as a substitute. That God put the wrath, the punishment for sin that I should have gotten on his own son. And that this son of God had paid for my sin and risen from the dead. And that he had the authority to forgive sins. If I would put my hope in him, he would let me in the door to heaven. And if I didn't put my hope in him, then I would face my own wrath for my own sins. And that's really the choice I had to make. I was afraid of religion. I was afraid of man-made religion, abusing people and, and distorting the truth. But this Jesus who had died for me, I couldn't say no to that. Not when I realized that, that the mercy of God had kept me alive all this time and at any moment that might be withdrawn. And now that I knew the truth, I had better say yes to Jesus while I could. And so I did. But I had this caveat that Jesus, if this is a scam by the church, I'll still do whatever I want. As long as you're for real and this isn't a scam, I'm in. And he turned out he was for real and it wasn't a scam. So that was 43 years ago. And I've had ups and I've had my downs. Uh, I've come to know scripture. And I've had coma times where you wouldn't have known I was a believer. I've had wrestled with God, just like Jacob wrestled with God. It's been a long and strange trip. And most of the stuff I've lived was going to burn in the fire. And yet, it's my hope that here at the end, as I finish, try to finish strong, that there might be a little bit that makes it through the fire. And so <clears throat> this, mo this morning, I'm just going to share uh, just a little tiny thing. Uh, the Lord just, there's little tiny things the Lord shows me that aren't worth a whole lot, but maybe it'll be something to you. So I'm reading out of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Peter says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace of that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each man's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. Okay, so the, the thing that caught me here is the similarity between Romans chapter 12, what Paul wrote, and what Peter said. Peter says, <clears throat> as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, holy, and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world. Peter said, do not be conformed to your, your passions uh, that you formerly in ignorance. He says, conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So in both Peter and Paul talk about not being conformed to either what you were, the passions you used to live in, or what the world is pressing you to be, but to be transformed. And the word holy came up in both guys. Peter says, be holy because I am holy, is what the Lord said. And uh, Paul says, holy and acceptable. This is what we're called. There is a change that must happen when you come to Jesus Christ. You are changed from ignorant passions and lusts into holiness. And it's an instant change in a sense, and it's a lifetime change in another sense. 
You're born again from an incorruptible seed, and there is an immediate shedding of a lot of sin comes right off as you're changed instantly. But then there's the process of setting your heart to follow Jesus and denying yourselves where he loves. Uh, take up your cross daily, deny yourselves, and come follow me. There's a decision you have to make day after day after day, and it's called sanctification where you begin to become more and more like Jesus. So there's an immediate change that should be very evident, but there's also the gradual change. Because a lifetime of following Adam and following sin isn't instantly changed completely. So it, and there's pressure from the world. There's pressure from your own body. I didn't know there was an enemy in the camp. It was my own body, my own lust of the old man that want me to be what I used to be, pressure to conform, versus the suffering of following Jesus. I have chosen the narrow, I have chosen the narrow road. Lord, you gave me such an easy load. I looked at the cross and I see your love. That's a resurrection band song. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's the deal. Uh, I'm still following Jesus, and I have a long way to go. I'm weary for the struggle. I'm weary for the way the world is against us so bad. The, the darkness is transformed where they say good is evil and evil is good, or somehow the people that have twisted the, the definition of the sexuality that God gave them uh, were created by God in his image, male and female, he created them. It's a very clear binary sexuality that God has created for a purpose of procreation within the context of marriage. And anything outside of that is a beginning of a perversion. And they have perverted so badly that they no longer accept any form of guilt. In fact, if you think, if you will say against them, then you are a hater. You are a hater. If you stand up for God's reveal, and you don't even have to read scripture. Anybody can look at biology and say that man was created for woman and woman for man, and there's a, th a thing there. Anything else is perverted. A biologist can see that if they're unbiased. You don't even have to have a Bible to see that. And yet they have turned it around to the point where if you stand up for God, then, then you're a hater. And that's completely wrong completely wrong so i'm tired of the fight i'm tired of how bad the world has gotten to where the good guys are the bad guys now and it's just it's just twisted it's just twisted and i the prayer that i have been praying thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven the amazing grace and patience of god there is jesus on the cross the people who put him there the soldiers who drove in the nails right there, casting lots for his own clothing. The, the Pharisees mocking him to his face as he's hanging there in agony. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. These people who are living this way, they should know what they're doing. But Jesus says, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They, uh, the consequences, if they fail to find that repentant place, and they wake up, and, oh my God, what am I doing? Oh, Jesus died for me so I could be forgiven. And I can continue in this worthless, passionless junk that's twisted and perverted, and stub my nose at God and say, forget you. Or I can go, oh, wow, I am so wrong. I am toast. Forgive me, Jesus. I'm sorry. And he's waiting. He's waiting. He's holding his peace. The day is going to come when he's not going to hold his peace. And I beg you, I beg you, sinner, come home. I am a sinner. I needed to come home. I'm no better than you. Come home. He's ready, willing, and able to forgive and to save you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But you got to let him do it. You got to come back. You got to acknowledge your need. You got to bend your knee. You got to come home. Oh, sinner, come home. 
Where's my gospel today? It took a long time to get here today. I'm very weary. I'm weary of the fight. I'm weary of trying to find a, a message. Uh, Lord God, I want you to fill me up so much with the clarity of the message and with a passion, uh, with a zeal that, that comes right through the screen and grabs people by your spirit of how much you love and how true you are and the truth of your word. Jesus, bring that to pass in me. I am an empty vessel. I am twisted up and dry. Fill me up with your spirit. Thank you, Lord. And then you'll get all the glory because I am an empty rag. That's my video today. Uh, shout, big shout out again to Jimmy. For, that is a gorgeous song. And my hope and my prayer, it, it, this whole Coffee with Tim thing that I'm doing, is that one person, just one person, just one person comes to know Jesus and has their life changed because of their interaction with something I said with the Spirit of God, made the Word of God active in their heart and convicted them of their sin, of, of their need for righteousness and of the coming judgment. And they received Jesus Christ. If one person, if one person, then all these videos will have been worth it. So I hope that you, when you do, whoever you are, when you come to Jesus, I start following him for real and let me know. Thank you. So I can praise my father for using this coffee with him. Thank you all. Father God, I just thank you for the people outside singing worship songs. At the bonfire, I thank you for America's Kessie, where there's always things happening where I have God moments. Just about every working day, interaction with somebody, where you bless me or you let me bless somebody else. This is a great place to be. I thank you for Neil and Cindy, my fellow sewers. I thank you for Philip and Jeanette, my fellow sewers, for how you're knitting us together and building us up. And for the privilege, Father, of serving you. I pray, Father God, for my listeners. Lord, as much as they pray for me, I pray that this would be a mirror. And you would double back upon their own heads the blessing with which they have blessed me. I thank you for each one, Lord. I thank you for each one. And I pray that you would grow their faith and establish them. I pray, Father God, that they would have a passion and a zeal to serve you and do good works. I pray, Father God, that you would embolden them to identify themselves publicly as a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father God, that their lives would be clean and pure and bring no discredit to the gospel. That there would be a purity of life and a purity of hearts and a purity of faith. Thank you, Lord. You're so good to me. All right, coffee heads, homies, sowers, Kessics, uh, church friends, love you guys. I appreciate so much your prayers, so much your prayers. And Lord willing, if he doesn't come this week, and I get to be here on the planet, and he gives me a message and I don't give up, Lord willing, we'll see you next week. And the, the, that, that is all, folks.